Hello and welcome to the next video in the Mission Planner Ardu Plane and Pixhawk series. In the first video I did the introduction, talked about it, and last time we actually flashed the Pixhawk with Ardu Plane using Mission Planner and then we did the basic configuration. This time we're going to put it inside this model here. Now this is a Nano Talon from ZOHD, but it doesn't matter what plane you're actually putting the Pixhawk into, whether it's a smaller plane like this, a little mini wing, or a big global mapper that's going to be airborne for several hours at a time with a three or four meter wingspan. The process that we're about to go through is exactly the same. Now the process is broadly outlined here on the right hand side. This is what we're going to get through this time. We're going to put it in the model, we're going to do the configuration, we're going to connect the servos, ESCs, we're going to make sure that by the end of it, it's ready to take the field and do some initial flying with. Be aware that everything I'm covering is documented at length in the Ardu Pilot Wiki. I'll put links in the description. Do yourself a massive favour if you're going to follow along with this series. Put aside half an hour, make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and spend some time reading through that. The vast majority of questions that I get these days are actually already answered in the Wiki or the disaster or problem could have been averted if you'd have been following along with the Wiki. But hopefully by watching these videos and carrying on and kind of keeping up it with the wiki documentation, you'll get to the end and everything will work perfectly. This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner, or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T motor, ESCs, motors, and props and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightware and Bennywake LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how this is all going to fit inside. The GPS is going to need to go on the top and luckily this model has quite a bit of room on both the upper part in between the two wings just below the main spar that supports the wings and also underneath there's a big bay that could potentially hold electronics as well. Now the challenge that I have is the Pixhawk that we flashed so far is a standard black Pixhawk and that is on the standard carrier board too and it's just physically too big. Luckily, there are other choices that I have here that we can play with, as well as the black Pixhawk cube on top of the standard carrier board, I have the low profile purple cube, and also the mini carrier board as well. In fact, there's lots of different carrier boards available for the Pixhawk cube. So depending on what you want to do with it and how much space you have, you can choose the one you want. But for my purposes here, I am going to have to use the purple cube with the mini carrier board in order for it to fit on top. Now I am sacrificing some things by using the cheaper, smaller, more compact purple cube than the orange or the black cube that are more standard for builds like this. The big thing I'm going to be losing by using the purple cube is the vibration isolation that's built into the other larger cubes isn't going to be there. The redundancy in terms of the sensors isn't going to be there as well. And also I'm not going to have the heater inside the little cube that keeps all of the IMUs at a constant temperature. So if this was a bigger, more expensive model, I'd definitely push to use one of the black or orange cubes with one of the full size carrier boards. Now that has mean that I've had to plug in the purple cube and go through exactly the same configuration that we did with the black cube, but that only took three or four minutes and I can continue putting everything together. Now again, we're plugging in the power module, we're plugging in a bit buzzer this time so I can hear the confirmation tones, and I also need to plug in all of the four main controls, the throttle, the aileron, and in this case, because it's got a V-tail, the V-tail left and the V-tail right servos. Now it is a little bit tight for space so I'm going to have to work to make it all neat but with it all together it looks like this and here's the underneath and hopefully you can see here the power module is tucked to the side the ESC is nicely in the middle and I've also got the buzzer at the front as well as the receiver here so everything has fitted quite nicely. 
turning the model over here is the pixhawk cube be aware though that there is an arrow on the cube that has to be pointing forward if it isn't pointing forward you can actually configure it in mission planner but my recommendation would be always mount it in the default position so the cube the top of the cube is upright and the little arrow on top of the cube is facing towards the nose of the aircraft the other thing I've done is I've cut a little hole in the side so I can get a USB cable in and out of it. Uh, you could use a right angle cable or something like that, but with a little model like this with a very sharp exacto, it's easy to cut the little hole and I've got a straight shot into the USB port for the next part. The thing I did do is I made a note of where I was plugging in all of the controls because that's the next part will connect up to Mission Planner and I'll actually configure the servo outputs here to be the right output for the throttle, aileron, and the two V-tails. Now, one of the big things to note here is the power for the servos is still coming from the speed controller. The red wire coming in from the speed controller, the same cable that also has the throttle on it, is providing the five volts and the ground that is powering the rest of the output rails on this Pixhawk. And without that power, the servos won't move. So let's plug it into the computer. Now we've got this little crib sheet and start to configure everything up. Again, at this point, I would remove the prop just for safety. So I have the Pixhawk all installed and uh, plugged into the computer, but no power. We're not ready for power yet. We need to check the radio is moving in the right direction and configure the servo outputs before we plug power in for the very first time. These are key steps. Do not miss these out because otherwise the servos will move in a very weird way for you. So in Mission Planner, let's just check the radio is moving in the right direction. Pitch in the high position means low channel value. That's right. It appears reversed, but that's actually the way it needs to be. All the other channels are moving exactly as you would expect. That's great. Now, interestingly, I'm spotting the middle channel values need to be tweaked, but we'll do that in a second. Now we've done that, let's go into servo outputs, and we have the crib sheet here, and we can assign any servo or motor output on any of the outputs in here. Now, this didn't used to be as good as this. Now, output eight is where my throttle is, so I've just pressed T on the keyboard that will shortcut me to throttle and then output one is aileron etc so let me just go through and match how i've physically plugged in the servos at the bottom of the pixhawk cube carrier board with this thing here now again this is how you could do things like channel forwarding uh, and there's loads of different options in here so for for a wing or however this is where all the mixing is done incredibly powerful and super simple plus this is where we can come back in a minute and set the maximum minimum throws and also the middle channel values to get the control surfaces spot on so with that all done that looks perfect moving the radio everything's moving around that's fabulous Next job then is let me just go back and recalibrate the radio. I'm going to go into the sub trim here on the radio and just get all the middle channel value positions for aileron elevator and rudder at 1500. And once I've done that, then I'm going to rerun the radio calibration just so that Mission Planner and the Pixhawk running RD plane is completely confident it knows exactly what the limits of the movement on my radio are and what the middle channel values are as well now the cool thing is the middle channel values are kind of learnt in mission planner anyway if it isn't exactly 1500 but i like to make sure that everything is absolutely spot on in my builds so now we've done that let's test it on the bench so we have the power connected here the battery's plugged in uh, let me try each of the controls in turn to see which ones are working and needs to be reversed so aileron is backwards it's in the right place but it's backwards okay next one let's do elevator so both of those should be rising the left v-tail is backwards the right v-tail is the right way round so that needs to be reversed Okay, let me confirm that with a rudder. Yeah, okay, so definitely the left V-tail is backwards, the right V-tail is okay. So let's go into Mission Planner and take care of that. So let me actually plug in the Pixhawk from scratch because you haven't heard all the little noises it makes. So when it first boots up, uh, you get a little trilling noise to say it's completed booting, and then that dir dir means that the radio isn't on so let me turn the radio on and then when it's connected you'll get the dir dip 
and that will confirm that everything is good. Now, uh, we're going to have to plug this into the computer and we can do everything kind of live, so which makes this setup really simple. So jumping into Mission Planner, let's have a quick look of that because as we can see, the aileron is wrong and we know the aileron left is wrong. So if I just click on reverse for the aileron back on the desk, immediately that's fixed. Brilliant. This is why this setup is so good. Again, the left V-tail is backwards or it appears to be. Let's hope that I've got that the right way around. So let's click on reverse for that as well. Jump back on the desk. And yeah, elevator's both working. Rudder is working too. So all of the controls are now in the right direction. Now inside this particular page, we could use the minimum, maximum, and the mid positions to set servos at 90 degrees and to get control surfaces in line with the wings. Now in flight modes, we need a couple of flight modes uh, for the initial flight. I would recommend having a manual flight mode and also something like fly-by-wire A and I've also got the third position as circle. Now the reason for that is that will allow me to have a manual mode to get out of any problem in case I turns out that something is going horribly wrong and uh, fly-by-wire A is going to test the stabilization and then we have circle mode. So in fly-by-wire A if I rock the plane from side to side I should see the control surfaces move to counteract that movement and I absolutely can. As I rise the wing, the control surface rises up in the same direction to try and counteract it. I now know that we're in really good shape. Just a couple of last things to set and we're ready for the field. So there's a couple of last things that we need to do to set this up. Now all we've been doing is going through each of the pieces in this mandatory hardware setup. Now we need to do the level calibration, so I need to lift the nose up about 5 degrees and then click on level calibration and that will save that. That'll mean that it should fly level. We've already done the compass, we already did the radio calibration, the servo output is all good. ESC calibration, we might come back to again, uh, it's working okay here. We've set the modes. Fail safe, now fail safe is one of those things I would check. Uh, we need to make sure we can arm the model as well, but I would also set up the fail safe to initiate return to home on the radio, but we'll talk more about that. Now if I try and arm the model, I'm getting a weird error about airspeed. Now this is because this probably thinks it has an airspeed sensor from when this cube was used on another model. So I'm going to go into the full parameter list and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for airspeed to find the parameter that corresponds to that and if I look down the bottoms, I can see the sensor type is set. If I set that to zero, we're probably going to be okay. Now, to troubleshoot arming, this is the way to do it. Try and arm while you are connected to Mission Planner, and in the screen, it'll tell you what all the problems are. So if I write those parameters back, and then we go and try and arm it by holding the rudder stick to the low right position, it's now armed and I can run the motor. Brilliant. Okay, that's good news. So there's not a lot of other messing about that we need to do. Last couple of things. Uh, in hardware ID here in this big list of mandatory stuff, you can see here that the purple cube doesn't have all of these auxiliary compasses, auxiliary IMUs, um, accelerometers, which the full-size black and orange cubes have. So that's one of the things that we've lost by using that low profile cube, but it can be fun to go in here to see how everything works. Now I noticed that the voltage wasn't being read here as I looked in the main screen in Mission Planner. Now that should be there by default. Now one of the things that I didn't realize was that I'd actually plugged it into the wrong power module bay. It needs to be in this one. This is the power module one bay. Once it was plugged into there, everything burst into life. So just be aware of that. It isn't obvious on the mini carrier board which is which, but moving it across meant that we could do all that stuff and I could set up alerts for the model to fly home now once its battery is below a certain voltage in all the failsafe settings. 
Now that we've got all the power stuff working, there is one last little thing that I'd like to tweak before I go into the summary, and that is in all of the settings. So if we go into the full parameter list, uh, don't worry, there's loads and loads of things in here. We're only going to change one thing. We're going to search for servo underscore auto underscore trim. So as I let me just type it here, you can see me typing in the right hand side, we're going to find it. By default this is turned off, this is one of my favourite little things for a plane. I'm going to say set that to 1 and write those parameters. And what that will do is as we fly in stabilised mode, fly by YA, the flight controller will automatically figure out where the midpoints need to be for all the controls for straight and level flight as you've defined it uh, when we set the level and write that back automatically. It's saved every 10 seconds and it means that when you go into manual mode all the trims are set up for you. So there we have it. We have gone from lots of things on the bench to everything being installed inside the model and we are ready for our test flight. Um, couple of things to make sure of before you can leave the house. First of all is to double check that you can arm it and that all works okay. And also double check that when you turn off your radio, the motor stops running and the uh, RD pilot detects failsafe. Now the receiver should detect when that happens and all that information should be sent across via the S bus connection into the flight controller. But just double check that that's the case before you go to the field. Do make sure that you have a manual flight mode set, that you have fly-by-wire A, and that, that you have circle mode. The reason for that is that uh, flying in manual gives you something to go back to if you find that you have accidentally set up the direction of the controls or the direction of the correction incorrectly. If you followed this video or the wiki, that shouldn't happen. But having that manual mode is just a safety thing to go back to. Uh, that manual mode, once you've done it and you're very happy, I would normally uh, turn that into launch mode, which allows you to launch the model, and I'll cover that in a future video. And then fly-by-wire A is a great mode. It just feels like it's flying on rails. Uh, we'll need to do a tune, and again, we'll cover that in the, probably the next video, but it will allow you to make sure that the correction is all working okay. And then circle mode is really just to make sure that when you click it into circle mode, it flies in a circle. But circle mode uses the GPS, so it should fly around the position that you initiated the circle command in. Uh, it might not be perfect because um, you might need to tweak a couple of the characteristics in Mission Planner so that it can uh, circle around okay. Uh, but for a small model like this, it should be absolutely fine. But it will prove that the GPS is okay. And again, we'll do the maiden in the next video and I'll go through each of those steps. Last couple of thoughts here. Ardu plane will fly a badly set up plane uh, okay. So things like your central gravity still need to be spot on. Things, and, and that's worthwhile double checking because of course we have a lot more weight in different places now. We have the GPS and the flight controller and other things too. The other thing is that I would spend a bit of time in that servo output screen just making sure that all the servos are at 90 degrees in the middle position. Use the kind of mid uh, trims to get them spot on. This is a model that I've already flown and is mechanically set up very well. So I can just drop the Pixhawk in and it's a pretty quick job to set it up in Ardu um, plane. If your model has never been flown before, I would always recommend personally taking it to the field, mechanically setting up well. I'll put a link in the description for a video of how you mechanically set up a plane well. Um, and then once you've got that mechanical stuff set up, so the servos are at 90 degrees, you have equal throws on all the control surfaces, um, putting the flight controller in it, uh, it RD plane will fly a well set up plane absolutely brilliantly. Like I said, there are a couple of things like um, change it to launch mode and doing a tune and stuff that we'll have to tweak with next time. Uh, but join me for that video where we'll take this to the field and we'll give it a fly. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. 
Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.